Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today have I got an awesome video for you. This is the Acer G3710 Predator gaming desktop computer. Who should watch this video? Why should you care? Well, quite simply, do you want to play all the latest and greatest games at full HD 1080p resolution at high quality at 60 frames a second? This computer will do that. How much is it? $750. Now, I have previously reviewed this machine in another video where I took it out of the box and opened up the side and talked about the hardware and components in it. That's a separate video. I will put a link to that video here if you want to go see that. I have also done a first boot to Windows initial impressions out of the box. And I've also done a Windows performance review where I show opening web browsers, playing videos, that kind of thing. Links to those two videos will be in the video description below. This video is all about gaming performance. Let me go ahead and tell you the final answer. This computer will play Battlefield 4, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, it'll play Fallout 4, it'll play Grand Theft Auto 5, all at 1080p, all at high detail or better, at 60 frames a second with no problems. Now that's the final answer. I'm gonna go ahead and give you that up front. I will open a couple games and show you how it performs. But I have tested it with, uh, with Fraps, which is the program that measures your frames per second. And I've loaded several levels and tried a variety of things. And it's very, very good at 1080p at high quality. So without further ado, uh, let's see here. I will go ahead and open up Tomb Raider. Now Tomb Raider is, the, uh, is perhaps the oldest game that I will show you today. Uh, Tomb Raider came out in 2013. And it's still a very popular game. Many people like to look at it. But um, this is absolutely smooth with the detail turned all the way up. So I will hit continue because I've got a save game um, that I set up earlier. And depending on the resolution you're watching this at, it'll depend on whether you can see it. But the uh, yellow frame counter up here in the corner, that's fraps. That's showing our frames per second rate. Now it's stuck at 60 because I have VSync turned on. I personally like playing with VSync. Your monitor can't display more than 60 frames a second anyway, so why not have it stuck to 60? Here we have Laura in the cave with a lot of lights. I like this scene because it shows off a lot of lighting, a lot of light sources. Shadows, reflections. She's holding her side because she was injured in a fall. So we'll come over here and we'll pick up the torch. And you can see as she bumps into things, everything moves around. Solid 60 frames a second, no issues whatsoever. We'll come over here, we'll ignite what's blocking our passage. That fire effect is kind of pretty. Again, we won't do this very long. I'll, as soon as I get through the water up ahead, I'll switch games. But I just want to show you a quick demo. Look at the lighting reflection on the walls. Now, realize you're watching a video of a monitor. So this is never going to look as good on this video as it does in real life. But rest assured, this is beautiful. So we come and squeeze through the passage. The water puts our flame out. And beautiful. All right, we'll get out of that. So exit to main menu. So Tomb Raider, full detail, 1080p, solid 60 frames a second. It does not budge from that. And we'll exit. And so let's see here. The next one I'll open up is Battlefield 4. Now, Battlefield 4 is the next release. Now, that game is a year or two old. That's not absolutely brand new, but it's still, it's still pretty new. Play campaign, play campaign, launching because it takes its time. This as well, I've got all the details turned all the way up. Anti-aliasing is turned on. Um, it's, I'll show you in the game, but it's absolutely gorgeous. No hesitation whatsoever. $750. This machine, I covered this in the initial unboxing and overview, but while this is launching, $750. It has got a four core Intel i5 sixth generation processor, uh, a 6400. So it's the latest and greatest chip from Intel. 
It's their middle chip between their i3 and i7. It's plenty for gaming. This has got a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 950 two gigabyte card. Now, that card is not good for gaming over 1080p. If you want to do something like 4K or even 1440p, you, you need a little bit more computer. And I have one to recommend for that. They're, they make an upgraded version of this with a better card. It's more money. But if you play at 1080p, which frankly a lot of people do, this is all you need. $750. I'll hit resume. And of course it has to load, but now I have done no upgrades to this machine. This is exactly how it comes out of the box. I've not upgraded the RAM. I've not put a solid state drive in here. This is running on a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. This stuff here waiting for the loading screens would be much quicker on a solid state drive. And in the next video I do with this machine, I'm gonna show upgrading it to a solid state drive as well as put some more memory in. But I wanted to start off by showing you that as it comes out of the box, it actually plays really well. You just have to be patient for the levels to load. It's thinking about it. Oh, my mistake. I hit the Windows key by mistake. We just have to wait for it to load up. Here we go. And now VSync is turned off on this, which is why if you look at the frame rate, it's currently running at 138 frames per second. Let me come down here to options, video, and it's full screen, 1080p. Uh, now vertical sync is off. Okay, I'll leave it off just so you can see how high it goes. Graphics quality, now graphics quality is set to auto. I will set it to high at high detail, it's running at 90 frames a second. I don't know about you, but that is pretty easy. Look at that. 83, 84 frames a second. What if I go change it to video ultra? Okay, I just set the detail to ultra. Back, yes. Oh, that's pretty. You can see the difference. Oh, we're still running at 60 frames a second. 61. Oh, I should probably get out of the uh, range of fire. Okay, here we are at ultra detail. Oop. I'm not going to do this for very long. Yeah, I can't, I can't destroy him anyway. Oh, but I can with this. Oh, I missed. How sloppy is that? Oh, and I'm still missing. Did I hit him? Oh, I got him. Sweet. Okay, you get the point. 60 frames a second. We are set to ultra detail. $750. No fuss. All right, let's get out of this because you get the point. Hit Alt F4, see if that throws us, there we go. Throws us back to the desktop, close that out. So you've seen Tomb Raider run solid 60 frames a second. You've seen Battlefield 4. Uh, I turned the detail all the way up to ultra. It was 60 frames a second. Let's try Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is much newer than Battlefield 4 or, Call, or uh, Tomb Raider. This game came out one year ago 
um, and it is more detailed and requires more hardware. It's loading. Again, hard drive, you just have to be patient for the loading screens. Here we go. I'm just trying to get to the loading screen so this video doesn't take too long. I'd rather not have to edit each chunk out because it takes so long to do it. Activision, yay! I love this computer. It's for 750, it's a great value. If you don't want to build your own computer you want to be able to buy a computer, take it out of the box, put it on your desk, plug your monitor and keyboard in. You are ready to go. I'll hit resume story. You can get some really good deals on uh, nice quality 1080p monitors these days. Really short, a 22 inch IPS high quality 1080 monitor, 100 bucks. A 27 inch 1080p monitor, $200. A 32 inch 1080p monitor, which is what this size is, this is 32 inch, you can get these in 1080p, 300 bucks. Nice quality monitors too. So 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. I should say dollars, I shouldn't say bucks, that's slang. Here we go. Look at that, solid 60 frames per second. No issues. It's just loading it wherever I had the last checkpoint at. It slowed down a little bit there. Now it fixes at 30 frames a second during controlled cutscenes. If you watch, it's stuck at 30, even though nothing's happening because it's one of those dialogue scenes where you cannot control the game. Why it does this, I don't know. And there we are right back to 60 frames a second, so. I'll just play it till we get outside and then, then we'll go do something else. But you can see it's perfectly smooth. In terms of detail, I'll go ahead and hit options just so you can see graphics. We're full screen, 1080p, 60 hertz, Render resolution is 100%, and this is an important thing. A lot of people don't realize that the render resolution can be set lower and that it upscales, but then it doesn't look as good. Sync every frame is checked um, under advanced. Texture quality is medium. This is one of those games where you got to set it to medium or it gets kind of slow. Texture filtering is high. Mesh quality is medium. We have shadow quality to low. That's fine when you're busy shooting things. Having some shadow is better than no shadow. Um, we have medium level of transparency, no anti-aliasing, we do have to turn that off, and there's some motion blur and whatnot, so where are we going? Did I run the wrong way? Oh, there we go. I was so busy talking. I need to bring my gaming mouse over here. I'm using a cheap keyboard and mouse for this. Here we go. Sixty frames a second. I will tell you from I, I did play with this more offline, and I'm, I'll stop here because you get the point. Um, in intense firefights, when there's a lot going on on the screen, the frame per second rate does come down a bit. Uh, I've seen it anywhere between 40, 45 frames a second during intense firefight scenes. It never dips below 30, at least I haven't seen it dip below for, uh, 30. The average seems to be between 40 and 50 when things are busy going on. Of course, nothing's happening right now, which is why it seems... Where are we going? Oh, I went the wrong way. Um, this game definitely requires more then, see we had a small dip right there. We'll do some shooting. That's holding 60, no worries. Now, here we go, ah, oh, bad guy. I should probably duck. 
What more do you want? Nice. Oh, still getting shot at. All right, you get the point. Save and quit, save and quit. So that game will slow down a bit. Now, if you want to maintain absolutely solid 60 frames per second, simple solution in that game. Either turn the texture detail down or set the render resolution to 90%. It does make the game not quite as sharp, but it maintains the frame rate better. A lot of games just come down to a balance between frame rate and, uh, here, let's do this one. Grand Theft Auto V. Between uh, uh, frame rate and quality. Now, if you're the kind of person who wants to set every last detail to ultra super mega max, you want to turn every slider up and not worry about it, this computer won't do that. In fairness, you, you, you'll run into a few titles. Grand Theft Auto V is a great example of a title that just won't do ultra everything except on the very best gaming rigs. Um, it's a very demanding title, especially when a lot of stuff is going on. Now, this game is way too much fun, and if I'm not careful, I will run around the city and have entirely too much fun. I love open world sandbox games like this. You can follow the missions or you can just drive around, steal cars, which is a bad thing, but it's a computer game, so it's okay. Um, it's just way too much fun. It just takes a little bit of time to load like the other titles. Now, while we're waiting for this to load, I will remind you, this machine has not been upgraded. This is exactly how it came out of the box. $750, the link to it will be in the video description below. If by chance, here we'll hit story mode. If by chance, after watching this or one of the other reviews, because I've done several videos on this machine, you go, my goodness, that's a bargain, $750? I can play Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, I'll do Fallout 4 in a minute, Grand Theft Auto, and it plays them all at 1080p at great quality at 60 frames a second? I want one of these things. Please use my link in the video description below. That is an affiliate link. It does go to Amazon. Amazon pays me a small commission for sending you their way. Now, in fairness, you can also buy this computer from Newegg and other places, but, uh, but if you buy it from Amazon, it helps me out. I did not get this computer for free. I did buy it myself. I bought it off of Amazon, and I like this machine. It's a great gaming machine for the money. You can buy more. They make it's loading. They make a version of this machine for just under 1500. I think it's 1450 at the moment. Same case, same appearance. The major differences are that machine has got the i7 CPU. It's an i7-6700 versus the i5-6400 in this. It's a faster chip, 20 to 50% faster depending on what you're doing. It's got 16 gigs of RAM instead of the 8 gigs in this. It does come with an SSD. What does that mean? All this stuff would load much faster. And it comes with a graphics card that is twice as powerful. It comes with a GTX 970 instead of the 950. That, you can turn all the detail up at 1080p and have no issues. Now, having said that, the detail here in Grand Theft uh, Auto V is not set to max. I'll show you in a second what it is, but I just go find a car to drive around. Oh, here's a nice one. Sorry, bud. Ooh, orange. I don't know about you, but it looks gorgeous. Oh, he's trying to get his car back. I'll just cruise around for a few minutes. There's no need to do anything else. The frame rate counter is at a solid 60 frames per second. This is, by the way, the first video I'm doing that has Fraps running to keep track of the frame rate. I credit my viewers. Uh, somebody made a suggestion on my AMD custom build review. I did an AMD A10. Look how nice this is. Beautiful. You can see sunlight reflections. Oh, sorry. Oh, they're not going to be happy. 
Oh, they're shooting at me. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, man, they're all shooting at me. Well, you know what we'll do? Let's go have some fun. I, I won't do this very long. Don't worry. But it's, ooh, ooh, but it's tempting. Yes, I know this is not real life. That's what makes it fun. This is pretend. Oh. And the irony is it's a stolen car. Oh. Oh, man, they've jammed me in. I don't think I'll survive this. Oh. I'm in trouble now. Yep, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's just awful. Oh, the cops are after me. Ooh! That always gets me whenever you do a head-on collision. What's really hilarious is when you have a bad one and you get thrown out the windshield. See why I said this is addictive? I mean, it's, you know, it's so easy to, uh, oh, sorry, knocked your door off. Last one. Oh, I thought I would fly through the windshield. I guess not. Let's see if I can get them to uh, shoot me to death. Oh, that's weird. I think my car's stuck. Okay, okay, that, that's enough. I told you I would show you the settings. I'll show you the settings, graphics. That is entirely too much fun. Okay, so we are at, uh, we're on DirectX 11, full screen, 1080p. We are at 60 hertz. Um, oh, we are at, here we go. Now, anti-aliasing is turned off. It has to be. V-Sync is on. Population density, variety, and distance scaling are turned up. Texture quality is at high. Shader quality is at high. Shadow is normal. Reflection is high. Water quality is high. Particles and grass are normal. Soft shadows are soft. And post FX is normal. Antroscopic antr filtering is uh, X16. Tessalization is normal. Okay, so this is not minimum detail by any stretch of the definition. That is normal to high level. Now, you can turn these actually to very high, and when you're not doing anything, it's still 60 frames a second, but the minute you're doing everything you just saw, it slows down. But here's the thing, 750, that's gorgeous detail. I'll admit, I did spend about 20 or 30 minutes before I filmed this video just driving around town on this computer in this game, having entirely too much fun, um, seeing how many vehicles I could destroy. <laughs> and uh, smooth, easy, there's no need for anything else. Again, if you want every single detail to max, or you want to play the game at 1440p or higher, like 4K, yes, you need more computer. But at 1080p, at full HD resolution, which is what you're watching here, you don't need anything more than what you get right here. And the wonderful thing here, I'll go ahead and get, how do I get out of this? Um, the, the wonderful thing is that, yes, if you buy this machine as it stands and you want to upgrade it in the future, you can. It comes with a 500 watt power supply with two PCI Express power connectors, one six pin and one eight pin connector. So you could actually put a GTX 970 or even a 980 in this machine, or if you prefer AMD, you could put in an AMD Fury um, or a, uh, an R9 390 or the new cards. Next year, there will be new cards out, and you could upgrade to one of those if you later want to go either multiple monitors or perhaps 4K resolution. So the computer will do that. It's got enough processing power. It's got... Uh, four memory slots, only one is being used. You can add lots of RAM if you want. You can upgrade the card later if you want to. How cool is that? Let's launch Fallout 4. Last game. Uh, first, I'll show you options. This, um, for some reason, the game auto-detected ultra detail. You know what? I'll leave it on ultra. So I've clicked alt. I want to show you what happens, because this won't be at 60 frames a second. At ultra detail, it does slow down a bit. Set it to high, problem solved. 
at high detail at 60 frames a second. But at ultra, if I sound enthusiastic, it's because I'm just impressed by how well this thing really performs. To be completely honest with you, I didn't expect it to. I really didn't. I thought I would have to turn the detail down more or that it would, it would slow down in the frame rate more especially in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. That game is very, it's, it's more demanding than it should be, quite frankly, but it was very nice. My personal gaming machine, I game on three monitors, and I've got three nice high-resolution monitors, so I've got personally more computer than this. I'm used to gaming with everything turned up on multiple screens. It's been a while since I've played with a mid-level machine like this at this kind of resolution. And I'm impressed. I am suitably impressed. Now, if you look at the frame rate, now again, I don't know if you can see it. It's currently at, it's at 36 frames a second. If I turn it this way, it's at uh, 43. I'll do some jumping, 48. This is totally playable, but it's not as smooth as I would like. I personally, let's just say that this was my main machine and I was gonna game on this as it came. Would I play this game as it's currently set? No. It, there's just a slight touch of lag in there as you move the controls. Now, some of that's the way the game's designed. Now, we're at 50 frames a second. Now, remember, we're at ultra detail. The details are turned to completely maximum detail. It's just, now we're down to 40, 45 frames a second. There's just enough hesitation. Here's what I'll do. Let me close it. I'm going to reopen it. I just want to show you the difference. Options. Now I'm going to hit the preset for high quality. Appearance wise, it's pretty close. Yes, there's a few differences. If you look at screenshots and if you go into various websites and look at the detail settings between ultra, high, and medium, when you're looking at a screenshot, you can go, oh, look, the grass is nicer. Oh, look, the clouds are shinier. Oh, look, the water reflection is pretty. That's fine, because you're looking at a, at a static shot and you're not playing the game. But what happens if you're playing the game? Well, you're running around, you're doing stuff, you're shooting at people. Are you examining grass blade quality? Meh, I don't think so. So now, the previous one was ultra, this is high. Previously, we were, now it never dropped below 30 frames a second, but it did get down to 35 to 40 several times when it was at ultra. And when you get into combat, it can dip below 30 at ultra. If you want to do ultra, you need a little bit more graphics card. But now we've set the detail to high, and let's take a look. 60 frames a second, oh, that's so much smoother. Oh man, look at the difference. I don't know about you, but that is blatantly, blatantly smooth. 60 frames a second, smooth. No issues. Very, very smooth. The difference in responsiveness when I move the controls. Hello. Yeah, very much better. Now, we've dipped a bit. We're at 50 frames a second. At high, it's not going to be absolutely rock steady solid at 60, but it's close. Whereas before, running around this area, we were dipping down to 30. Now we're only dipping down to 50. The responsiveness in the control is much better. Now here's the question for you. Can you actually see any difference between ultra and high? Everything's a little less shiny and maybe a little less reflective. When you're just looking at a static screenshot, okay, if I look at this and then switch to ultra looking at the same screen, it's a little bit different. Now, running around and doing this, 60 frames a second. Very smooth, quick to sprint, quick to run. Wonderful, okay, you get the point. So, in conclusion, $750 gets you a computer that out of the box will basically play all the new titles at 1080p at medium to high detail, some at ultra, such as Battlefield 4, 
at 60 frames per second in beautiful quality. Now, if you want to play with everything at ultra or higher resolution, either multiple monitors or a 10, or 1440p or 4K monitor, okay, get the $1,450 version of this because it has a faster processor, more memory, and it has a better graphics card. But here's the cool part. You can buy this machine now, and in a year or two, swap out the video card. It just has a standard normal PCI Express video card in it. You could swap out the video card for whatever the latest and greatest is a couple years from now. And then you could upgrade and play those games because this has the power supply that will let you put in a more powerful graphics card. I like this machine. I definitely recommend it. A couple of quick features that I didn't show in my previous videos. For, I'll come around because it's easier. First thing, I didn't know what this was when I did my first video, but this is a removable drive tray. I didn't even know this had this. This is a tray that lets you add a drive to the computer without having to uh, take the side off, screw it in, or mount it. And it, you can swap it out, so you, it's toolless. There are pins right here where you can drop in a bigger hard drive. This comes with a one terabyte drive, but let's say you want more space, and so you want to put an internal drive in maybe a four terabyte drive. Drop it in. The connectors are in the back. You just slide it in, push it in as far as it goes, and then push this lever closed. Well, no, I got, there we go. Snap it shut. That's all there is to it. The other cool feature is this. Do you game and play with headphones? This pops out. It just pops in and out. It's on a spring-loaded clip, I guess you call it. When it pops out, this is to hang your headphones on. So if you don't have a place to hang your headphones, it provides you with a place to mount your headphones right here. And there's USB jacks here as well, so that you can charge if you have maybe wireless headphones that take power, you can certainly plug those in, as well as the headphone and microphone jack right there. That's actually really, that's, that's a nice feature. What can I say? I like this machine. Um, what do you think? Do you like this video? You know what to do. Do you not? Well, that's okay too. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of these videos already done and more on the way. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, that's what the comment box is for. I like ideas. An example is putting the fraps counter up in the window for the frame per second rate. That was a suggestion from one of my viewers. So I do read, listen, and uh, follow up on your suggestions. If it's a good suggestion or I can make it work, um, I, I like good ideas, so, so uh, please send those my way. Now, if you do decide that you like this computer after seeing it and go, man, that's a great deal, I want to get one of those. Please do me a favor and help me out and use my links in the video description. They are my primary revenue source for doing this. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I didn't get this machine for free. I had to buy it. So my hope is that I'm providing useful information to you, my YouTube viewers, and the way you can pay me back is to use those and I would be really appreciative. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.